Okay. We're going to go ahead and start this afternoon's session, the intersection of IT and emerging threats in cyberspace and cloud computing. We have some wonderful speakers. I'll just give some brief introductions and then we'll go ahead and um, and give you guys some information. So we have Robert Breeze, who is the Deputy Chief Information Officer for Information Technology as the, new, the, sorry, the Nuclear Security Administration within the Department of Energy. He is responsible for the functional accountability and governance of $1.5 billion of investments in information technology at three national laboratories, four production plants, the Nevada Test Site, and the NNSA Service Center. Prior to his appointment as the government senior executive, Mr. Breeze served 22 years in the U.S. Naval Submarine Service, retiring in 2006 following a variety of operational and headquarters assignments, including seven major sea deployments. We also have with us today Chris Garcia, who is the director of the Cybersecurity Management Center in the FFA, or sorry, FAA, Office of Information Systems Security. He is responsible for the protection, detection, and response to cyber incidents. Garcia joined the FAA as an air traffic control specialist in 1982 after having served as a professional pilot, pilot and flight instructor with the corporate flight department. A native of Philadelphia, Garcia is a graduate of Valley Forge Military Academy and Junior College, the Academy Reserve Officers Training Corps program, and the American Flyers Aviation Training Academy in New York. He received BAs in Political Science and in the Honors Humanities from Villanova University College of Arts and Sciences and also an MS in computer science and information technology from the Regis University College for Professional Studies, which is in Denver, Colorado, where he serves now as a member of the associate faculty within Regis's professional studies. So thank you guys. I appreciate you being here. Thanks. All right. So you probably wonder how an Airedale and a bubblehead got stuck together. <laughs> 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 the good news is that uh, Chris and I met at National Defense University about a year ago, I guess, and um, so when Tarn suggested that uh, he and I get together, I was like, okay, that sounds like fun. And um, so they gave us a topic, and um, I don't know if we'll talk anything about it, but uh, we've got some stuff that um, I think you'll enjoy. Um, we're going to start off, and, and I'll, I'll do the first handful of slides or so, then I'm going to turn it over to Chris, and uh, then I'll, I'll kind of wrap up. Uh, but it's really kind of uh, two perspectives. I'm going to give you the perspective from, that I have as an executive trying to execute business transformation for a government agency. And uh, I'm always stuck with um, my peer in the organization, my chief information security officer, who uh, has an alphabet that only contains two letters in it, M and O. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to, to train you to use a, to add three other letters to that, which are Y, E, and S, or, or H, O, W. So Chris is going to tell us how um, in the FAA, a lot of the advancing technologies and methodologies that they're using give chief information security officers a chance to tell me what I'm trying to do. So, so I'll start and, and tell you what I'm looking for. And I had no idea what's going to happen with these slides because Parm put animations in, or you put animations. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's that's good. All right. So this is what we want to try and cover. Is, um, and I'll tell you, I really believe very strongly in this new role of CIO. There's a Gartner presentation from about a year and a half ago that talked about CIOs living in the past and being you know providing applications and uh, managing vendors and things like that. And now. Uh, agency heads and corporate heads are looking at CIOs to really be that strategic thinker, a true business partner, and the one that's really uh, laying out the business strategy. And then uh, we'll talk about some of the innovative ways that Chief Information Security Officer CISOs are leveraging technology. And then the bottom line is that the, the two of us together, uh, whether you're managing an incident response center or whether you're uh, providing the policy and governance for information security, uh, the two of us really got to work together to execute business transformation. There's a, there's a lot of challenges out there, and I really look at this not as challenges, but as, as opportunities. Um, globalization's been going on for a long time. A lot of you probably already read, uh, you know, economics, the power of mass collaboration, and, and how mass collaboration changed the world. Uh, the world is certainly getting smaller and smaller every day, and uh, somebody made a comment uh, to me, you know, what are we going to do when everybody has the internet? You know, what, what, what are we going to teach people in schools when, they, when they're just going to go home and look it up on the internet and come back and tell the teacher, well, that's not exactly what you said yesterday, because uh, I looked it up and everything on the internet is what they tell them. So, 
Um, climate change, uh, you know, global warming, climate change, uh, certainly that's a big focus uh, at my agency in the Department of Energy. Uh, whether or not you believe in it, there are certainly a lot of things we're doing to our environment, and there's a lot of information and data out there that uh, has not been tapped, tapped yet that uh, we need to take a look at. And obviously the other things like economic development all the way down. My role on a day-to-day -day basis really falls into international security. Um, my, my group uh, provides oversight of the nation's uh, nuclear deterrent, uh, non-proliferation activities around the world. Uh, so when the president gave his speech in Prague uh, earlier about uh, eliminating all the uh, vulnerable nuclear material in, in uh, four years, that's us. That's what we do every day. Uh, we also provide the, the nuclear reactors for the U.S. Navy, and we also provide the world's nuclear counterterrorism and incident response. So all very tough challenges, all this stuff, but the great thing is it gives us a lot of opportunity. And cybersecurity is a challenge that, while I highlight it there first, we're going to kind of go into that last, and then we'll kind of close on that, on that uh, security topic at, at the end of the brief. But there's a lot of things that you all do on a day-to-day -day basis for people you work with that um, are opportunities for us to meet those challenges. So what are we looking for? We're really looking for CIOs that are out there that are creating tomorrow. We're looking for CIOs that um, you know, find opportunity instead of constraint. And my favorite one here is refuse to choose between undesirable options. When, when I get brought a business problem and, and my architect or my lab directors or whatnot say, well, this is the only thing we can do. The only thing we can do is keep doing what we did yesterday. We just need to pour more money into it, or we need to just modernize the infrastructure we have. Um, you know, it's, it's go find me another rock, and, and sometimes you've got to give them enough information to go find you a better one. But choosing between undesirable options is not tenable today. Uh, today's government, the amount of money that we spent with, um, with um, the uh, ARA, with the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, with TARP, and all those other things, there's a lot of money flowing out there, and there's not a lot of extra cash to be put into government technologies and security systems. <clears throat> a lot of other opportunities out there. Again, if we go back to the, um, the, the previous slide and the CIO or the global challenges uh, and our opportunities, there's a lot to be done there. But in the end, CIOs have to know the business and the technology. And it's, and it's key to have partners uh, like, like Chris, or in my case, my CISO, Wayne Jones, to be partners with us and start to engage and become a team that goes out and solves those tough business challenges. And I'm going to kind of roll through this fairly quickly because I'm hoping that at the end we can have some discussion about the challenges that you're having and the things that we've had experience with. Um, you know, like um, I, as I was introduced, I have three national laboratories I wouldn't say at my disposal because they, you know, in the Department of Energy, uh, an order is the first uh, statement in a discussion. So, uh, but I'd like to have some discussion about where we can help you or where we can work together. All right, so we'll see what happens here. In our case, in, in energy, and, and you all may experience this if, if your agency has bureaus or um, the Department of Defense, you've got Army, Navy, Air Force. Um, and then plus all the subunits of, of each of those. But within the Department of Energy, we have about 30 different government-owned contractor-operated facilities. And every one of them operates pretty much independently. And in our case, we do have a production role for the nation. And we've continued to operate that as essentially uh, you know, what we used to call stovepipes and now affectionately call cylinders of excellence. But, <laughs> you know, hey, you know, I think they're pretty good, and they are, you know. But, um, but what they'll tell you is, you know, we're also a for-profit corporation. In, in NNSA, the National Nuclear Security Administration, we are no longer operating our labs as non-profit FFRDCs, Federally Funded Research Development Corporations. Now, that still occurs on the energy side, and occurs in a lot of...